Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about uh, defending yourself in a public setting. Okay, this is a setting like a mall, um, you know, a shopping plaza, you know, the supermarket. In, basically in a situation where you have lots of different people around um, and one bad guy that's basically trying to hurt people, that's, that's out to shoot people, okay? Um, so, so we're going to talk about a couple of different concepts here. Um, right now that's my bad guy in the back, okay, on that barrel, okay? Uh, that's an innocent bystander, that's an innocent bystander over there. So here I am, minding my own business. That guy over there starts shooting people, come out, move to the side, Move to cover, okay? Do my scan and assess from here, okay? And then immediately reholster the gun and cover it up, okay? That part's very important. Scanning and assessing with the gun covered and reholstering and covering the gun up as soon as as, as the immediate threat is, 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 is not present anymore. Now, granted, there may be additional threats in the area, but that's why we're continuing to scan and assess. Uh, but we want to do it with the gun in a holster covered up. And, and the reason is because there's other people here um, who might mistake me for the bad guy, okay? Um, and I don't want them to see me, I don't want anybody to see me holding a gun, you know, after that guy just finished shooting a bunch of people and now maybe he is also dead on the ground because I shot him to stop him. All right, so now people coming out to the scene, they're going to see one person that's alive holding a gun, which, is, which would be me, and I'm the guy that they're going to shoot, okay? So and keep in mind that, you know, police that are responding to this situation, they already have it in their head that they, they're coming to this location to shoot somebody with a gun, okay? I don't want to be the guy that they shoot. So... As soon as I stop that threat and I do my scan and assess and get to cover, okay, um, I want to reholster the gun. Now, something else that we saw in this situation, when I started out, I was here, okay? So this guy was in my way. This person was in my way. So I did the sidestep to get offline. Now, a lot of times when we talk about doing that sidestep, you know, uh, we've talked about in the past about getting offline, you know, to get out of the way of incoming fire. Um, I rarely hear people discuss it in the sense that there might be somebody either, you know, between you and the bad guy, or there might be somebody behind the bad guy, uh, and you might want to change the angle at which you're shooting at, okay? And, you know, and just moving a, a foot or two to either side uh, can drastically change that, okay? So, so that's one of the things I want you guys to, to think about, um, and also, you know, practice your sidestep, okay? Because that's not just a matter of getting you out of the way of incoming fire. Uh, it's also a matter of, you know, you not shooting the innocent people in front of you to get to the bad guy, okay? Uh, let's do this one more time. So in this situation, I'm here. I'm going to first run to cover, okay? Take my gun out. Fire my shot. Okay? Do my scan and assess, okay? Immediately reholster the gun, okay? Now, that was a situation with that person, the bad guy, was not aware of me, okay? So I had time to move to cover first, okay? So in the first scenario, the bad guy became aware of me, so I had to, you know, return immediate fire so I don't get shot on the way to cover, which was a couple of feet behind me. Uh, in the second situation, the bad guy was not aware of me, so, so I had time to move to cover and, and fire from there, okay? Um, so like I said earlier, you want to, you know, take your shots, stop the threat, do you scan the sets with the gun covered, right? Scan the sets with the gun covered. That's one of the reasons why I like small guns, okay? And then reholster and cover the gun up as soon as possible so that you're not mistaken for the bad guy, all right? Uh, now, another thing to, for you guys to be aware of is that you, know, you might be a third party, right? Uh, you know, coming on, you, you know, you heard some noise, you're coming onto the scene, and, and now you see, you know, you, you see commotion, you see people laying on the ground. You see one guy over here who might be holding a gun, okay? Because maybe, you know, he didn't watch this video and he didn't know that he should have reholstered his gun. Who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy, okay? Right now, he, this, this person here with the gun is the only person that you're seeing. So you're going to think that he must be the bad guy, right? Because, you know, that guy's already dead. He's laying on the ground. There's certain uh, clues that we can look to to figure out if this is, in fact, the bad guy, okay? Um, first clue is... You know, is this person flagging everybody with his muzzle, okay? Because 
the bad guy is typically going to, first of all, he's going to be walking through the place like he's the Terminator, okay? Um, and he's going to be pointing his muzzle in every, you know, in every, every direction, all right? Um, he doesn't care about uh, muzzle safety. He's not going to care about flagging innocent people because he's there to kill innocent people. So, so he's going to be pointing the gun every which way. The other thing is he's probably going to have the gun, his finger on the trigger, okay? So, so there are two immediate things that, that will tell you if, if this guy over here is, in fact, a good guy or a bad guy, okay? If he's keeping the gun in a safe direction, finger off the trigger, straight finger, okay? That's a telltale sign, telltale sign that he's probably not a bad guy, okay? Um, so, 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 you know, that's, so, you know, these are little clues that you can be aware of. Also, his posture, you know, is he handling the gun or is, ha is he handling himself um, as if though he's been trained, okay? Because trained people move differently from untrained people, okay? So... You know, there's another a good reason for you guys to get training and practice, okay, because, you know, it's just not a matter of you performing, uh, you know, when you need to, right, to be able to defend yourself and others, but it's also a matter of how other people perceive you, okay? If they perceive you as somebody that's, that's been trained, um, you know, that should be a clue to them that you're probably not a bad guy. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys next time.